Today on the Vince Everett Ellison Show, we're going to talk about whether Christian Democrats have made the Democratic Party their one true God. Yeah, we're going to talk about that today. Now, I want you to like, subscribe, comment on this, because you know the big tech people are going to try to block me because they don't like what I'm talking about, but we're not going to let them do it. So we're going to talk about whether or not Christian Democrats have made the Democratic Party their one true God. Today on the Vince Everett Ellison Show. All right. Let's get this thing started. Yeah, today we're going to talk about whether Christian Democrats have finally just decided to let the Christian go and just really just tell the truth about who they really are. That the Democratic Party has become their one true God. Now, why would I say that? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, our Bible tells us Jesus Christ asked his disciples, can a man have two masters? He answered his own question. He said, no. He'll love one, he'll hate the other. So if you got yourself a dog, right, and there are two men in front of the dog, and both of them are calling the dog at the same time, the one the dog goes to is his master. The one that the dog obeys is his master. When I was a boy, I don't care how many men were around me. When my father called me, that's where I went. As adults, we choose our master. Some people believe that it's a master-slave relationship where, you know, the master beats the slave into submission and the slave has to do what the master says to do. No. You always choose your master. You choose who you obey. And the person that you obey is your master. Now, bearing that in mind, you have to ask the question. When it comes down to Jesus Christ and the Democrat Party, who do liberals Obey. Who do the Democrats obey? Psh. You don't even have to think twice on that one. They obey the Democrat Party, especially black Christians. I was reading this thing in Esquire magazine one time, and they were talking about the demographics of the Democrat Party. And they started talking about black Christians. And they called them Sunday morning Christians. They were only Christians for two hours during the week, and that's the time they was at church. <laughs> and the rest of the time, they were liberals, man, outside, stone-cold liberals, drinking, smoking, fornicating, fighting, raising hell, stealing. And then they come to church, and they want to do the Holy Ghost dance, talk about how good God's been to them. I mean, the Christians that say, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. I can have all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And then on Monday, they're out there fighting and sweating, begging for the crumbs that fall from the government's table. We got to have health care. We got to have food stamps. We got to have housing. We got to have a, a, a school. We got to have a, a better education in school. All we got to, you got to get the guns off the street because we need the police to stop beating the hell out of us. They're, they're not turning to God then, are they? They're turning to that other God, and that other God, God is government. Now, here's a cool thing about white liberals. White liberals will tell you that. You bring up a white, you bring a, a God to a white liberal, they be, <laughs> God, you must be crazy. Oh, they make fun of Jesus Christ, call him a zombie. Y'all believe in the zombie. Y'all, why don't you believe in y'all? Y'all believe in the Walking Dead, huh? I mean, they'll tell you they believe that the resurrection is foolishness. They'll tell you they don't believe in it. They believe that, that when you're dead, you're dead. Have a good time here on earth because tomorrow we die. These jokers don't care about nobody. And this is who the black church has sided with. They're communists, y'all. They're atheists. They tell you. I was very surprised to find out when I uh, discovered that most of the Jewish community supports the Democrat Party. 
And when I looked into it, it was because the, the Jewish community that supports the Democratic Party are mostly secular Jews. They don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe in the Torah. So it matches. If you don't believe in God, you support the Democrat Party. So you ask the big question, well, how does the black church connect into this? Why is the black church siding with all of these liberal atheists? Could it be that most of the black pastors are also hypocrites, liars, apostates, and closet atheists, and, and closet non-Christians themselves? Hmm. You go into this concept of uh, black liberation theology in the black church. This crazy concept that's it's a communist construct. Yeah, black liberation theology came out of communism. It's a communist construct. And it basically says that Jesus Christ would not have identified with white people because white people were oppressors and Jesus Christ himself was oppressed and therefore he would have identified with black people because he was oppressed like black people were. Stop right there. Jesus Christ was never oppressed. You can kill that one, player. When Pilate told Christ, don't you know I have the ability to put you to death. Pilate told, Jesus told Pilate, you have no power over me. You don't take my life. I lay my life down. And when I want it, I'll pick it back up again. Oh, he let it be known. He gave his life up. Nobody took anything from him. So the whole concept of, 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 of black liberation theology is a lie based upon the fact that Jesus Christ was oppressed. Are you crazy? Nobody oppressed Jesus Christ. So they convinced black people of this lie. So black people start walking around with their heads bowed, back bent, talking about, ooh, I'm oppressed, I'm oppressed. I can't do nothing, I can't do nothing. And Jesus was oppressed just like me. It started with a lie, it ends with a lie. If you're oppressed, it's because you've allowed it. And if you're a Christian, you cannot be oppressed. So as you see these black pastors walk around here telling you you're oppressed, it is anti-Christian. It is an affront to God. But the Democratic Party tells them to tell you that, and therefore the Democratic Party has become your God. Now how did we get here? There's been a lot of interesting things going on, going on since I wrote the Iron Triangle. I opened up a train of thought that has really taken off. Again, Iron Triangle was rated number 61 of the greatest political books ever written. One of the things I did in Iron Triangle was I went backward and I had to find out how, where did we take the wrong turn? Because we were doing so well as a black community between 1940 and 1960. And then all of a sudden we hit a flat line. And after the 1960s, we never had any more progress. Matter of fact, we started going backward. And I had to ask myself the question, where did we go wrong? So I dealt with Jesus, Jesus Christ's concept that a tree is known by the fruit it bears. You know, he says, how do you know a false prophet? A tree is known by the fruit it bears. You will not get good fruit from a bad tree or bad fruit from a good tree. Each tree and each fruit will be after its own kind. So I looked at the black community. And I saw that the fruit was rotten. So based on what Jesus Christ said, the tree that the fruit came from had to also be rotten. That tree, that, 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 that tree was most black churches, most black politicians, and most civil rights groups. But most of all, it was the black churches because everything stems from religion. Everything stems from our religion. So I went back to the black church. And I looked at the civil rights movement. And I looked at the leader of it, and it was Martin Luther King Jr. I didn't deal too much in King's theology. I just dealt a lot on his social issues because, I mean, he's a pastor. Getting involved in all this social stuff, he was just out of his element. And he was taken to the cleaners. He didn't know what he was doing. I mean, isn't it obvious he didn't know what he was doing? I mean, black people at the bottom of everything in the, in the industrialized world. I mean, the family destroyed, the schools are terrible. 
the economy destroyed, fighting in the street, killing in the street, acting a fool in the street. I mean, I, how 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 much worse can it get? I mean, we we about like Haiti in the black community in America. Okay, you know, go to Haiti, go to Chicago, go to Haiti, go to New York, go to Haiti, go to New Orleans, go to Haiti, go to St. Louis. Okay, it, it looks the same. No difference whatsoever. So, but King is celebrated. All right. So we asked the question, how did all this start happening? Okay. So a lot of, a lot of guys have been doing a lot of good work on this. Virgil Walker is one. He's done a lot of good work on going back and going over King's papers and I, asking this one basic question. I knew that, I understand that King was a failure as a social leader. It's just too freaking obvious. Plus the fact that liberals celebrate him should show you that he was a failure as a, so, as a social leader because when you start talking about liberals and what they want for society versus what conservative Christians want as society, you know, liberals want, you know, crack houses. They want prostitute houses. Uh, they want you, 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 they want you to be disarmed. Uh, they want drag queens in the schools and all this kind of stuff. And, and King made all that kind of stuff happen. So they like him, okay? But people have been looking at his, his speeches. They've been looking at his works. And some interesting things have, have come out, and there are people that have said that, that King was not even a Christian. Um, and if you want to look it up online, you can just Google was Martin Luther King a Christian, and you see all kinds of stuff is starting to come up uh, about it. And and how since he was teaching these anti-Christian values, these anti-Christian values have permeated almost the entire black church. So it was this piece written by this young man by the name of John Horn for this um for this magazine called Discerning History. And it was a just uh, it was a in interesting question. It was just a question. Was Martin Luther King Jr. a Christian? That was a question. I'm gonna read you some excerpts from it. And he said that uh King had an ortho an unorthodox theology. This is what he wrote. He said, Martin Luther King Jr.'s theology was very liberal. In papers he wrote during his time at Crozet Theological Seminary, he made his views clear. He said that the evidence for the virgin birth, quote, is too shallow to convince any objective thinker. So he didn't believe in the virgin birth. He stripped the doctrines of divine sonship of Christ, the virgin birth, and bodily resurrection of all literal meaning. So he didn't believe in the resurrection, didn't believe in the divine sonship of Christ or the virgin birth. This is what he said. We could argue with all degrees of logic that these doctrines are historically and philosophically untainable. Hmm. We could argue that we could argue with all degree of logic that these doctrines are historically and philosophically untainable. Hmm. Untainable. In another paper, he wrote, and this is a quote, a supernatural plan of salvation, the Trinity, the substitutorianary, substitutorianary theory of atonement and the second coming of Christ are all quite prominent in the fundamentalist thinking. Such are the views of the fundamentalists and they reveal that he is opposed to theological adaptation to social and cultural change. Amid change all around, he is willing to preserve certain ancient ideas even though they are contrary to science. So he says that the supernatural plan of salvation, the Trinity, is a substitutional theory of the atonement. And the second coming of Christ are all quite prominent in fundamentalist thinking. And he said that these views, these views, of the fundamentalists, and they reveal that he is opposed to theological adaptation to social and cultural change. Amid change all around, he is willing to preserve certain ancient ideas even though they are contrary to science. He said these are ancient ideas. 
that are contrary to science. And that is who we follow, and that is who we hold up, and that's who we venerate. Black people have this picture up in their houses beside Jesus Christ. And we are finding that we are following false prophets. And we have found that we have a party. Well, not we. You have a party that has turned his back on God and you have decided to make it your God. If you go back to your scriptures, if you're not too far gone to understand this, understand this. Our Ten Commandments starts out with the first commandment. Maybe it is the most important commandment because it's number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That seems to be pretty easy. That means simply if God said do it, do it. If God said don't do it, it means don't do it. There's no ambiguity here. But instead, when the Bible talks about killing your child in the womb, and he says you were wonderfully and beautifully made, when he says that I knew you in your mother's womb, when Mary went to Elizabeth and said, I'm pregnant, John the Baptist jumped in her womb, but the Democrats say, kill your babies. Now Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are telling you that they're running on that. And instead of you saying, my God says, no, you don't kill a child. You don't harm a child. The Jesus Christ said, anyone harms one of these little ones is better than a millstone be tied around his neck. He'd be thrown into the sea. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are running on killing these children, and you said, you got my vote. Your Bible says that the, that, that the fear of God is the beginning of all knowledge. You should teach a child while they're young to fear God and to obey him. Yet the public education system says God is not welcomed here. Conservatives come and say, well, we'll give you school choice so you can pull your child out of these schools and send them to a school where God is welcome. And you say, no. Who is your God? Mm-hmm. Our Bible says if a man doesn't work, a man doesn't eat. So the work for what you get. Oh, but they're out there running and screaming and hollering about reparations, reparations, reparations. And you say, you got my vote. Bible tells us that we're to forgive. We're supposed to love one another. Give forbearance to one another. Forgive one another. But every time we turn around, oh, you hollering about what happened in the past. Oh, what they did during slavery. And we want this and that for it. And we ain't going to stop. And we're going to burn up stuff till you give it to us. Bible tells you you're supposed to change people's hearts. You're not supposed to extort people and coerce people and threaten people and Put a gun to people's head to get what you want to. Oh, no, not the Democrats. We're going to march. We're going to scream. We're going to burn up stuff till you give us what we want. Now, let's look at the result. Your communities are in a mess. Nobody wants to live there. The only people that live there are the ones that you make live there. You got to put them there and tell them, hey, you know, this is just the best you can do. And you have to live there because... You can't afford to live anywhere, anywhere else. Rappers always talk on this trash about how they love the streets. First chance they get when they make their first $1,000. They are there. They are out. Nobody wants to live where these people rule. Nobody. Why? Because they're Satan themselves, and wherever you find chaos, that's where the devil rules. People, I'm just trying to help you out. I'm trying to let you know that it's time to turn it around. The Democratic Party has claimed to be God. Why have they claimed to be God? Because you've allowed them to be God. You've told them, tell me what to do and I'll do it. 
What about your God? Forget him. We'll do what you say. Tell us what to do. If it contradicts our church, we'll do it. If it contradicts our family, we'll do it. If it contradicts our people, we'll do it. We will do whatever you say. If they were strangling you to death, you'd kiss them with your dying lips. This is a sick relationship that the black community has with the Democratic Party. And it's a sick ideology that liberals have around America. You see how these liberals live, man? I mean, they are just horrible people. Shooting up all the time. They look crazy. They always are walking around with all kind of crazy makeup and crazy stuff on them. They look, they look like they don't have good sense. They're drunk all the time. And when you watch movies, oh my gosh, you got to always be ready to grab the children and just pull them up under the cover because they don't tell them what they'll do on screen. Walk around naked, be getting, just having sex on screen, doing dope on screen, cussing and fighting and killing, slashing people's throat on screen. They'll do anything. People don't have any morals whatsoever. You watch the award show now, it looks like a freak show. I don't even watch them any longer. People up there half naked, grinding on the stage, talking crazy, looking crazy. Nevertheless, oh boy, you got some so-called Christians that say they love them. They're not there trying to save them. They're not there trying to pull them up to the light? No. Everybody out there want to go to a ditty party. Now they got caught and everybody said, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. You know what you were doing when you went to the ditty party. Preachers don't got caught at the ditty party. Politicians caught at the ditty party. Oh, yeah, it's all about to come out now. You know why? Because you're dealing with the devil. Can a man have two masters? The Democrat Party has become your God. And he's going to destroy you. He's going to grind you into the ground. Haven't you seen enough? Haven't you seen enough already? I think that we're at a tipping point. I, I, I see that America is coming toward another great awakening. I think that we're going to stop allowing these people to sexualize our children. I believe that we're going to stop allowing these people to expand the drug game in our communities. I think we're going to um, stop these, we're going to stop allowing these people to separate us, us and our families from our God. I think that we're about ready to tell the Democratic Party, you've taken it too far. I think we're where we are in 18... 60, when the nation was getting ready to vote and they were, had gotten to a point where they were tired of slavery. Enough Americans had seen the institution to say that this is not Christian, this is not right, and that the Democratic Party had gone too far. They looked at the South and they saw how Democrats were down there raping black women and then putting their own children on the auction block and selling them. They, they went down South and they saw that after generations of white male Democrats getting black women pregnant and these black women would, would be half white and then uh, a white slave master would rape her and then the child would be uh, 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 almost white and then he'd rape her and the child would be basically white. They came out and they found out about almost 20% of the slave population you could look at and they were basically white. They saw this corrupt evil institution down there. And the Christian people said, this has gone too far. We have to stop this. And they elected a guy by the name of Abraham Lincoln, who did what needed to be done to put America back on the course that it was supposed to go. And the Democrats fought him tooth and nail for 100 years. And then after a lot of fighting and arguing in the Civil Rights Movement, which didn't do anything, but give, the, but give the Democrats and the liberals more power. And now they're taking it and they put it into overdrive. 
If you want to talk about what the civil rights movement did, all it did was make the Democrat Party more potent. They killed hundreds of times more since the civil rights movement than they did before it. Before the civil rights movement, there was very little abortion. Before the civil rights movement, there wasn't uh, prisons almost in every county in the United States of America. Before the civil rights movement, the black family was together. The schools weren't, weren't, weren't monster factories. No, the Democratic Party put their, their evil and they put their, their, their insanity into overdrive after the civil rights movement. Because before the civil rights movement, we kind of had enough sense to stay away from them. I mean, they said they hated us. They said they'd kill us every chance they get. They said they hated our children. And we were basically saying, okay, then, we'll stay away from you. And then Martin Luther King Jr. and all of them came and handed us over to them. And they've been beating the hell out of us ever since. So what's the solution, y'all? Very simple. Turn back to God. Turn back to God. Vote for a politician that will not use government to get between you and your God. They will not use government to destroy the education of your children. They will not use government to disarm you. They will not use government to destroy your family. Vote for a politician that will say, I will leave you alone and I will allow you to prosper. I'll get government out of your life. Because as Ronald Reagan said, government is not the solution. Government is the problem. And if you look at somebody and he happens to be black and he says he's a Democrat, you need to say, I'm done with you. I ain't going no further with you, player. We're finished. My friends, God is a jealous God. He is not going to compete for power. If you want the Democratic Party to be your God, he's going to let you have him. He's not going to run after you. He's going to put you in the hog pen where the black community has been for the last 60 years. In the hog pen, like the prodigal son. But you can come back. There's a light on for you. You can always come back home. Now I want you to go to my website, thispeakstruth.com. And when you go there, there's a lot of good stuff there. You can look at my past shows. You can look at my shorts. You can look at a lot of great stuff there. But I want you to purchase this documentary, Will You Go to Hell for Me? It talks about what I'm talking about right now. The Democratic Party is an evil institution. Voting for this party will send your soul to hell. And you can't let these people send your soul to hell. You're too important. Don't let them do it. 25 Lies. This book came out two years ago. Sold over 100,000 copies. Get 25 lies. You'll never, ever, ever, ever need another book. It has 25 of the Democrat Party's most damnable, destructive, and seductive lies. It'll tell you how to refute them. It is a handbook to destroy the left. Get Crime Inc. It came out this last October. Crime Inc. is awesome. It's been number one four times on, on Amazon. You read the reviews, people tell you it's one of the best books they've ever read. It talks about the Democratic Party as a crime family and how to use these mafia techniques to hold down America. Read it. It'll show you how to get around these people, how to keep them off of your back. That's the most important thing. And then again, Iron Triangle started it all. It blows the lid off of the most black preachers, most black politicians, and most black civil rights workers being conduits between rich white liberals and the black community. They get paid, y'all. They get paid to control y'all. They don't care anything about you. Isn't it obvious? NAACP, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, James Clyburn, Maxine Waters are all part of a cabal of perverts, liars, psychopaths, and anti-Christian bigots designed to keep you under control for their white masters. People, I am here to wake you up. Hope you listen. Turn back to God. Live a beautiful life. I wish you nothing but happiness. So join me again next week on the Best Ever Ellison Show.